As Ethan Crumbly faces four counts of first-degree murder plus terrorism and weapons charges, his parents are under the microscope. The prosecutor says they should have secured the weapon so their son Ethan Crumbly couldn't get a hold of it. News for Jack's IE team investigator Vic Michelucci is looking into the parents' history living in Duval County and the consequences they could face. Investigators say his mother and father met with school leaders the day of the shooting after people raised concerns about the potential for violence. And detectives found out his father bought the gun used in the attack days earlier on Black Friday. Prosecutors say both parents could soon face charges. First degree murder is the most serious of all those crimes. Second, there are facts leading up in the shooting that suggest this was not just an impulsive act. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald would not elaborate on details, but said her office has a mountain of digital evidence and the attack at Oxford High School was planned well before it took place. With the right of owning a gun comes responsibility. And the responsibility of a gun owner is to securely store that weapon and to keep it out of the hands of somebody who could kill people. Prosecutor explained why the shooter was also being charged with terrorism. What about all the children who ran screaming, hiding under desks? What about all the children at home right now who can't eat and can't sleep? It happened here in Oxford, Michigan. A 15-year-old sophomore allegedly opening fire out of nowhere. At least one student, a captain of the football team, was killed while trying to disarm him. Police arrived about five minutes later. They confronted the shooter, who immediately put his hands over his head and surrendered. We are charging this individual with one count of terrorism causing death, four counts of first-degree murder, seven cult counts of assault with intent to murder, and 12 counts of possession of a firearm and the commission of a felony. When the shooting started, students barricaded themselves in classrooms behind stacks of desks and chairs. Here in Oxford, community leaders held a vigil on Tuesday night, and while grieving students and parents begin the mourning process, most say they are trying to keep the focus on their loved ones. I just need to focus on bringing our community together. Police say the gun used in the shooting was purchased by the shooter's father just four days before the shooting. As investigators piece together what led up to this tragedy, we are learning more about the suspect, Ethan Crumbly. The sheriff previously acknowledged that a handgun shown on a social media account that's believed to belong to the suspect is the same type of weapon used in the murders. Ethan Crumbly faced a judge Wednesday, just a day after he's accused of gunning down his classmates at Oxford High School. As detectives search for clues about what led up to the shootings, the Oakland County Sheriff confirming what the seven investigators have been learning from several sources, that Oxford High School officials met with the teen and his parents about concerning behavior just hours before the shooting. We had no information from the schools, but we have since learned that the schools did have contact with the student the day before and the day of the shooting for behavior in the classroom that they felt was concerning. In fact, the parents were brought in the morning of the shooting and had a face-to-face -face meeting with the school. Sheriff Michael Bouchard not revealing the topics discussed during that meeting, only that his liaison officer in the school was not told about it. Bouchard also confirming the school allowed Crumbly to stay in the building after that 10 a.m. meeting and around 12.50 p.m. the shooting started. Sheriff said there was no evidence that the 15-year-old sophomore had sought treatment for any mental health conditions and was not in the process of doing so. And Bouchard said he has viewed the horrifying surveillance video inside of the school, saying it appears that victims were shot at randomly and were not specifically targeted. He did not release any of that video today, but described the evidence prosecutors will be using in court. He came out of the bathroom, began shooting, moved through hallways and back through hallways and was apprehended in the hallway. Never went into a room. If you weren't hit by a bullet, doesn't mean you weren't terrorized that day and won't 
have nightmares about it the rest of your life. According to Oakland County Prosecutor, Ethan Crumbly had planned to stalk, rape, and kill. In an article by Fox 2, Crumbly wrote in his journal that he admired Hitler and Dahmer. His journal also detailed that he planned to surrender so that he could witness the pain and suffering that he caused. Crumbly had planned the entire event. In another article by Fox 2 titled, Maybe It's My Paranoia, phone records show Jennifer Crumbly ignored texts from Ethan about demons. On March 9th, 2021, around 7.50 p.m., Ethan Crumbly texted his mother, someone walked into the bathroom and flushed the toilet and left the light on. Jennifer Crumbly wouldn't get back to her son until the next morning. Seven days later, Ethan would text Jennifer again, okay, this house is now haunted. We're talking uh, about some just shocking details from the Oakland County prosecutor who's really making a case here for all of the warning signs of Ethan's disturbing behavior, which included uh, hallucinations of demons and ghosts, torturing animals, even filling an entire notebook apparently with drawings of guns. The Oakland County prosecutor, Karen McDonald, says the parents had to be aware and didn't do anything about it. Ethan Crumbly was so fascinated by guns that he was looking up bullets the day before the shooting. The prosecution laid out Ethan's disturbing behavior months before the shooting that they say his parents ignored. Ethan told them about hallucinations that there was a demon in their house. The evidence will show that Ethan Crumbly was gravely troubled. He was fascinated with firearms. He was violent. He displayed terrifying tendencies and behaviors, and he literally sketched out what he planned to do in his journal and his drawings. Tate Meir, Madison Baldwin, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling, all victims of what the prosecutor calls a premeditated attack. 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly, a sophomore, is now charged as an adult with two dozen crimes, including murder and terrorism. We are told there is a mountain of evidence against this young man, including a video made just the night before and 30 spent shell casings here at Oxford High School. Honestly, Judge, I don't have the words to describe how horrific that was that happened on November the 30th. It depicted just before 12.51 p.m. this defendant entering a bathroom with a backpack. A minute or two later, he exited the same bathroom without the backpack, but with a gun in hand. The assistant prosecutor told the judge it was over in a couple of minutes, but Crumbly came armed with a gun and armed with intent. He methodically and deliberately walked down the hallway, aiming the firearm at students and firing. The parents of Ethan Crumbly, Jennifer and James, were on the Zoom connection with their son's court hearing. Yesterday, we were told that dad told his son not to talk, and they were getting him an attorney. Two attorneys today were court appointed. One of the charges is terrorism causing death. Prosecutor says the shooting continued. After children started running away from the defendant, he continued down the hallway, again at a deliberate and methodical pace, pointing and aiming inside classrooms and at students who hadn't had the opportunity to escape. Before the arraignment, the officer in charge of the case told the judge about the evidence they found at Crumbly's house. The intent to kill, but still no motive, no reason why. Two separate videos recovered from Ethan's um, cell phone, um, taken in a search warrant, depicted a video made by him the night before the incident, um, wherein he talked about shooting and killing students the next day at Oxford High School. Further, a journal was recovered from Ethan's backpack, also dealing, detailing his desire to shoot up a school to include uh, murdering students. Whether you're a parent, a teacher, or a student in that class, um, you know, going through that, that building in the wee hours of this morning, uh, looking at the disarray in the classrooms and the backpacks strewn across the floor, that had to have been an absolutely terrorizing moment in anyone's life. Had Crumley not had access to a gun, four teenagers would still have their lives today. Because of radicalized, careless, conservative America, we have four fewer people on this earth. Guns should not be accessible to children, and they definitely shouldn't be accessible to those who have terrorism on the mind.